I think just the drivers of violence, it's just the inequality, it's the poverty, it's the lack of jobs, it's people not believing in tomorrow in a positive way, they're waking up and doing what they have to do to earn that book. And unfortunately, some of these problems lead to issues like what we're seeing there, where little girls are being killed. You know, it's just guys settling their problems in the street. It's ridiculous and it's a dying shame. It's just something needs to be done about it. And we need to do it now. Just, just let me dig deeper into that, Eugene, because I think what you've basically just said is if you've not got any money or you've not got any prospects, this is your only option. I don't think that's quite what you're getting it's, at, is it? Because there'll be a lot of people watch this who go, well, hang on a minute, we used to have a time when people didn't have any money and the poor didn't necessarily turn to violence. It's, it, the situation is people are airing their problems in the street and bringing them across where it's a separate entity entirely. Some of these people here, they're not part of the wider society. They're part of a small number of people that do these kind of things. I think maybe if we knuckle down and see where the problems are coming from, that we could understand them better. So just just, learn, just let me understand this. So in terms of the status symbol, because this is quite a bit of it, isn't it, Eugene? The, the status of these gang members, there's a, there's a huge amount of, of kind of credibility at stake amongst a small community that they feel part of. Why do they not feel part of a bigger community? Because these people, how they want to live, they're not wanting to be part of society. They don't want to go to work because they've realised there's no jobs there and this is something that they don't want to turn around. They're not interested in being part of the society. So they live in a very closed off world. And when we try to explain and speak about them, it's very hard for someone like me to have the wider society to understand the mindset of these people. It's something that it will never be understood. And what we're trying to do now is pick up the pieces from something that's happened that is always going to be there as long as these people are on the streets. But there's no clear answer that I can give you in terms of how we will resolve this, other than we keep doing the solid work as youth workers. We're out there, we're trying to connect with the younger generation to make them understand that these role models that they might be following, that they're corrupted, they're doing the wrong things. They need to start believing in some people like myself and other people out there who've turned it around and can show them a brighter future. So who are these role models that they're looking, looking to? Do you mean people online or people within their community? Yeah, it, it, it's twofold. I think, to be honest with you, the, those that are online, the American influence ones, they, they paint a picture of a life that's just not real. Yeah. It's just not real. They're only posting stuff that shows them winning. I mean, real life people from the community, the entrepreneurs, people who have got businesses in my community for the last 25, 30 years, is talking to them. It's the gang members from the 90s who have lived through the trauma, who have had the cars, clothes and the jewellery, he will show you that the trauma that all that comes with that, it is not worth it. These are the role models. These are the people that these, these kids will see every single day. They don't have to follow them on the social media at all because it's just not real. And that's what we're trying to do, encourage some of the gang members from the 90s to come out, have a conversation, let the kids know that what you're going through now might seem like that's the one, the, um, the thing that you want to do. But on the other side, it's nothing but laced with trauma, dread, misery and regret. Don't they need we alternatives? The as, don't they need alternatives as well though, Eugene? Don't they need of course, sport? Of course. They need opportunity, they need training, they need jobs, they need to feel a sense of purpose when they get up in the morning. I said the inequality there. I mean, we've got role models, we've got football stars down here, we've got guys who are ex gang members who are in the UFC now, who are in Bellator, who are in um, different fight championships. These guys were hardcore gang members that turned it around, abused violence to now feed their families. We've got role models here. It's just trying to get the youth's attention. It's so hard when our own government, for example, they lay down policies and just don't back them up. You know, these kids, they see what's happening on the news, you know, they see what's happening around the world, they're not getting motivated by that. We're trying to pull them back in and say, look, don't pay no attention to that. Believe in us, we are the truth. We're the ones who have got boots on the ground in these communities trying to make the changes. We just need the support. And if anybody out there that wants to come on board, more than welcome to Let me ask you one more question. I could talk to you all day because I think this is exactly the voice that we need to hear on this conversation. I genuinely do. What are they frightened of, these kids? Anything? What, the fight, the, the, do you know what they're frightened of? I'll be honest with you, losing. They will take that risk to earn that money because where they come from, 
it's from a really bad place and we'll take that risk and unfortunately they're not going to change all we need to let them understand is you can go to be a winner and you can chase that bag but do it in a constructive way it's not going to change until we get out there as i say people like myself and others and show them that you can turn it around no matter where you've been or where you're at in your life you can turn it around and we will stand there with you and face that fight with you that's what we're trying to get across